We have made fantastic progress up until this point. We've talked about our key light positions, our secondary light positions, what their characteristics are, what they're great for, and so forth. And now it's time to talk about light quality. And we gave you a little hint of that when we showed you those key lights with diffusion and with fills and so forth. Now let's just focus on light quality. Sounds delicious, light quality. Okay. So there's two main qualities that I want you guys to understand the differences between when we talk about light quality. Again, there is no right, there is no wrong, there is simply a best look or a right type of look for the situation, for the subject, for the particular emotion that you, the photographer, want the image to have. Let's start over on this side. Between soft and hard, these are probably two terms that you hear thrown around fairly often. We've talked about it already, or we've actually kind of thrown the terms around in discussion of images up until this point. But what these two terms actually mean, and they get confused a lot between diffused versus specular. A lot of people think soft is diffused and hard is specular. And oftentimes those two things do kind of coincide. Oftentimes a specular light is also a hard light. But not always are they kind of one and the same. So I want to describe them separately so you guys can understand the differences. A light being soft or hard is simply talking about basically that transition from light to shadow, that edge, okay? Now, the sharper the definition of that edge, and you can see here in this shot with Yoko, this was a direct flash shot, I think this was with a gobo, you can see that that light right underneath the chin right there, the transition is extremely sharp, okay? It goes from basically deep shadow to bright light. Now, you'd describe the sun as a very hard type of light. When it's just direct noonday sun, that shadow to light edge is extreme, it's pinpoint. So it's either extremely dark or extremely bright. That's a hard light. A soft light on the other side is a light that basically softly transitions from shadow to that light area, wherever the light's hitting versus where the light's not hitting. So you can see on this side, the softness between where the light's hitting on the chin and the cheeks and versus underneath the neck is much more gradual. It's a much more gradual transition from areas of light to areas of shadow. What creates soft versus hard light? Well, it's simple. It's the simply the size of the light in relation, and this is the key part, in relation to the subject. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, a flash, this little flash, our LP-180, in relation to Yoko is quite small. Okay, so when we're firing this and when we're shooting Yoko with direct flash, and I think for this shot, I think we were using the Canon, the 580EX for that shot, it's a very small light in relation to a rather large subject. But have you guys looked at, say, macro photographs? Like macro photography where they basically take a flash just like this one and they position it right next to a bug like this, and it's this beautiful soft light and it looks incredible and it looks like just this amazing light. And you're like, I don't understand. It's just a flash that's unmodified next to the bug. Why is it so soft? Remember, it's in relation to the subject. So a little bug placed next to this flash like this, I mean, that's equivalent to me putting a giant wall, a giant light that's like 20 feet high by 20 feet wide next to Yoko. Of course, that's gonna create a very, very soft and wrapping light. Okay, so it's always in relation to the subject. Now this is the other key point to remember. So the larger the modifier that we use, the more soft that transition from shadow to, to highlight or shadow to light is gonna be. The smaller, the more hard that edge is gonna be. There's one small little thing there that I need to mention. Well, the larger the diffuser or the larger this, this modifier that's gonna soften up the light, the more light loss you have. So when we're using direct flash, we get a lot of light directly on Yoko. But as soon as we start bouncing off of reflectors, as soon as we start opening up that light and creating a larger light source, uh, we're losing a lot of our power. A lot of our light intensity is dropping off. Just remember that the more you expand a light source, the bigger you make it, the, the softer it becomes, but then the less intense that light becomes as well, which we have to adjust for in our camera exposure. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and place this light back. One other key point that I wanted to mention here is that 
a light source in relation to the subject, the size of the light source in relation to the subject, that's also very much dependent on the distance from the subject. And let me give you an example of this. Here is a reflector. Now let's say I fire a flash into this reflector and the reflector is placed right here and I'm lighting myself. Right now, this reflector is a gigantic light source in comparison to my face. Now if I'm shooting and this is my light source, I'm gonna have a very soft and wrapping light around my face because this is such a large light source. But if I move this reflector 40 feet away, then really there's not much difference between the size of this light source and a small flash head that's maybe five feet away. So distance plays a big part in the size of the light source in relation to the subject. I mean, the sun is the perfect example because the sun is absolutely gigantic, right? The sun is how many times bigger than the earth? Yet in relation to us here, it's tiny. It's a little pinprick in the sky or a little pinpoint. Pinprick? You'd prick your skin, not the sky. So it's a little pinpoint in the sky. So we get a very hard edge from it. So distance plays a big part in like that size in relation to the subject. Okay, so that's it as far as soft versus hard light. You want a soft light, you use a larger light modifier in relation to the subject. You want a harder light, you use a smaller light modifier in relation to the subject. I'm gonna show you when we get to that uh, direct flash shot with Yoko that, well, the most interesting shot isn't always with the softest light. It again, always comes down to the emotion, the look, the feel that you wanna have and using the right tool to get there. So let me set this guy. Actually, we're gonna use this guy in one more second because I actually wanna discuss the next point in our light quality, which is diffused versus specular. What does that mean exactly? A, a modifier that diffuses light, basically it, it opens up the light rays so that when it hits a face, or when it hits a surface or your subject, not a lot of that light bounces back into the camera. But a light that is more reflective as a modifier, okay? And the example of that is this right here. This silver reflector. This is an example of a specular type of light modifier. This light is gonna be much more direct and the light that it pushes into my face is gonna be, basically have more reflective qualities to it it's gonna have stronger highlights, it's gonna have more contrast, it's gonna be a harder kind of edge to it. That is a specular light modifier versus this is a diffuse light modifier. Each of them have their own purposes. When we want to create a soft and natural look, we use a light modifier that isn't gonna kick back a lot of specular highlights. When we wanna create that more reflective look, and we did this, so on this side we have uh, Jill's little kind of portrait session where we're going for a natural light look. We have Jill again in a swimsuit with kind of a more fashiony look with her glasses on this kind of like a cool vibe and I used a specular silver reflector here because I wanted that light to come back reflective. I wanted to create a harder edge to it. I wanted that more contrasty look because of the way she's dressed and the type of look the image has. But know this, uh, a reflective surface, a more specular modifier is gonna kick back more light and create more highlights around areas of skin that might be sweaty or be a little bit more oily and so forth. So if you want a more flattering kind of light, you'd use a diffused modifier, which is basically a matte type surface. It's a non-reflective type surface. If you want a more kind of high contrast and highlighty type, highlighty, is that even a word? Type of light, then you'd use a specular or reflective type of modifier. And the more reflective that modifier, the more specular that light comes back. The more matte the modifier, the more diffused the light comes back. Again, it kind of relates to also the intensity of light as well. So generally a specular light is gonna be a little bit harder in the terms of kind of the way the shadows fall off. But it also has to do with the size of that specular light in relation to the subject. So both these things kind of come into play. If we're using a silver, a specular light, and it's placed close to my face and I'm bouncing off of it, it's still gonna create a light that has a gradual transition from highlight to shadow. But guess what? The highlights and the shadows are gonna be a lot more contrasty. They're gonna be a lot more prominent. So that is a specular versus a diffused light. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully these two light qualities are kind of better understood now. Soft and hardness, the graduation from shadow to light transition is all about size and diffusion versus specularity is all about whether the surface that you're bouncing off of is matte or whether it's reflective. That's it for this video. Let's go ahead and move to the next one now.